Today, we're going to be taking a leap forward from simply having a cybersecurity VM in your home lab to using it for actually something that is incredibly powerful. We're going to be setting up our own scene completely for free. A SIEM is a security information and event management system, and it is the cornerstone of any security operations center. It collects and analyzes security data from across your entire environment, helping you detect threats, investigate incidents, and ensure compliance. By the end of this video, you'll have set up your own working SIEM using Wazar completely for free. I believe that hands-on projects is one of the best ways for you to learn in the field. And if you're a existing SOC analyst or training to become one, this project is definitely for you. And welcome back to the channel. My name's Joshua Clark. I'm a security analyst based in the UK. And on this channel, we cover all topics from cybersecurity to ethical hacking. For this, we're gonna be using Wazar. And I really hope I haven't butchered the pronunciation, but why Wazar? This is because it's a open source platform. It's incredibly feature rich and it's perfect for learning. It's got everything from log analysis and intrusion detection to vulnerability detection and even file integrity monitoring. Plus it's scalable. So whether you're protecting a single machine or a whole network, Wazar has got you covered. Let's get started. First, we're gonna need a server to run the central components of Wazar. I'm gonna start with a fresh Ubuntu VM. If you're not sure how to get started with a VM, don't worry, I've got you covered. Check out my previous video, setting up a, your first cybersecurity VM in VMware Workstation Pro, which don't worry, it's completely free. I'm gonna throw a link in the description for you. That video is gonna walk you through the whole process step by step, but for this, we're gonna assume that you already have a VM ready and you're able to access the terminal. The previous video shows you how to get Parrot OS set up, so all you're gonna to need to do is follow the same steps, go to the Ubuntu website and download a copy of Ubuntu. Okay, so at this stage, you should have your Ubuntu server up and running in VMware Workstation Pro. This is gonna be your Wazar server. This is gonna run all the core components. It's gonna be where the seam lives, where the web application lives, and where all of the agents are gonna report into. So before we dive in and install the actual server, let's have a quick look at their website. So as you can see, it's an open source security platform. And not only is it a SIEM, as I've mentioned before, it's also an XDR. So that's gonna bring in some of your detection and response capabilities, which you can expand out into once you've set up this platform. You can see that it's got a very nice web interface, which we're gonna dive into shortly. And it's used by some really large organizations. There's so many awesome features packed into this open source tool, which you can play around with and dive into deeper once you've got it set up. One of the amazing things about open source software that's well supported is that it has amazing documentation. So for the actual setup of the server, we're not gonna deviate from the quick start documentation because it's so simplistic and easy for you to get started. So here we see the hardware requirements, which are actually really nice and low for what we're gonna use this for. We're gonna install a couple of agents, which only needs four vCPUs, eight gig of RAM, and 50 gig of storage. This is probably the baseline of any VM that you're gonna set up anyway. And that's gonna give you 90 days of look back period in the seam for up to 25 agents, which is perfect for your home uh, test environment. So here you can see that Ubuntu is supported for this, which is what we've chosen to set up. And we have this awesome little one-liner script to get the server set up. So this is gonna pull down the installation script and then run the installation script. The dash A at the end is gonna make sure that it installs both the Seam server, the web interface, and also an agent. So let's grab this to our clipboard and head back to our Ubuntu VM. So with the server open, let's go and uh, pop open a terminal. And in terminal, let's elevate ourselves to the root user by doing sudo bash. And here's where we're gonna put our one line command. One thing that I would mention, which wasn't covered in the first VMware tutorial, if you're having trouble with uh, clipboards, so being able to paste stuff across, you can go up here to VM and install VMware tools. If that's not working, the easier way, especially on Linux, 
is to um, just install open VMware tools. So sudo apt install open dash VM dash tools. And that's going to make sure that your VMware plays nicely with the guest. And you can also install VMware tools dash uh, desktop. And that's going to make sure all the clipboard copying and stuff like that works. Once you've installed both of those, you may need to reboot the guest and then your clipboard should be working as expected. So let me grab that one liner again from the website and let's just paste that in here and let it do its thing. Okay. Oh, I don't have curl. <laughs> Interesting. Let's install curl. And try again. Okay, so once the installation has finished, you should be able to visit the Wazar dashboard. Um, you can see here that we've been given an admin username and password, and the dashboard by default runs on port 443. So we just need to get the IP address of our server and we can visit that dashboard. This took about five minutes to finish the installation, which is not bad at all. Let's just go and grab our IP here. So uh, here's our IP. Let's copy that and open up Firefox. And in Firefox, let's just paste the IP in and we should get our login screen. Perfect. So the username is admin and let's grab our password here. Okay. And log in. Okay, we're in. We've successfully set up the server and we have the web UI running, which we've now logged into and we're greeted with the home page. Here we can see that there's currently no agents installed. So here we've got deploy new agent. I'm going to click on that and we're going to deploy an agent to a Ubuntu machine. So what you're going to want to do is set up another machine um, in your environment that's running Ubuntu so we can get an agent up and running and see how that feeds into Wazar. So let's go for uh, Debian AMD64. Our server address is going to be the address of our Wazar server, which we have here. Let me just grab that, paste that here, and I'm going to remember that. So if we do any more agents, let's call this um, Ubuntu uh, user which will be our agent name. If you leave this blank, it's going to use the host name of the machine. And what this does is it gives us a nice one-liner uh, command, which we can use on the host machine to turn on the agent and have it feed the data back to the scene. One of the things that you can do here, obviously this is a manual method, but you can use all sorts of different methods to have this deploy out to all of your machines on your environment. Um, you can use things like group policy or SCCM, uh, but for this example, we're gonna do it manually. So what you need to do is go and get a uh, Ubuntu machine, which you've spun up in VMware Pro. For this example, I've already spun up another machine. We're gonna log into this machine and we're gonna run an agent and see that agent feeding back into the scene. You can do this on Ubuntu, you can, oh, Linux, you can do it on uh, Windows, you can even do it on Mac OS. So you have cross-platform capability. Once this is loaded, let me log in. Okay, here we have a shell. Let's again uh, make ourselves root. And we'll take that one line command that we had from the um, seam. So with that command copied, let's go back to our Ubuntu user machine and paste that in. This is going to register the agent with the Wazar seam server. Now that that's installed, we just need to uh, make sure that the agent is started properly. So let's go back to our seam server and we have our commands here. So let's take that and go and run it on our server. So we'll run all of those commands. Okay, so it's enabled the agent and it's started the agent. So now that that's done, when we go back to the home page, we can see that our agent is active. If we click through here, we should see the agent and we can see here that we have Ubuntu user, which is the name of our user machine that we created and set up the agent to connect back to this scene. We can see it's active, we can see the version, we can see which version of Ubuntu it's version, 
running. And if we click into it, we should be able to see some more information as it's starting to pull data through. We can see that vulnerability detection is turned on, and it's already found some vulnerabilities with packages that are on the host. Uh, we can also see information about compliance. Um, we've got all different types here that we can go through. Um, and we should see data start to come in from the VM. Uh, we can also see different activity based on the MITRE attack framework. So we can see here that the agent was connected, the agent was stopped, and the agent was started, which is what we just did a minute ago. Um, and in theory now, if we start running some commands on this user machine, we should be able to see those events collected by the scene. So let's go in and do some stuff here. So let's open a new prompt. Uh, let's elevate to... Um, the root user, and let's run something like who am I? And then if we go back to our scene, we should see once the data has been pushed into the scene, this activity being flagged to us. So let's have a look. Straight away, we can see some um, different MITRE attack framework. Um, event showing up here. So we can see a login, we can see um, sudo. So this is us escalating to root. You can also have a look and see the definition of the tactics. If we go into explore, we can start to see all of the logs coming in. Before we go any further, there's an important step that I want to show you first. If you're anything like me, you find light mode really harsh. So let's go and turn on dark mode. In the settings, click on Dashboard Management, and then go to Advanced Settings. And partway down this page, you'll find Appearance. And under Appearance, we have a dark mode. In my opinion, this setting is really hidden and could be surfaced um, somewhere a bit more obvious. But once you turn that on, click Save Changes in the bottom right and reload the page. And there you have it. You now have dark mode, which in my opinion just looks so much better than the light mode. So now that we have a Linux host set up with an agent and that agent is reporting data back to the scene, let's go ahead and set up a Windows host. So let's go back into our agent summary here. Let's click on deploy new agent. We're gonna choose Windows. Um, let's give it an agent name of Windows host, uh, just because this is for testing. We get a one line command here, which is gonna download the agent and connect it to our Wazar manager. So let's click on that and uh, we'll go over to our Windows host. I've just spinned up a Windows 10 box uh, in VM Workstation Pro. You can do that by downloading the ISO online and running it how you normally would in your VM software. Um, so for this, we are gonna need a administrator uh, PowerShell prompt. Let's do that now and then we can paste the command in here. So we'll run that. That should download the agent. That should connect the agent to the manager, and all we need to do after that is make sure the service has started. So let's allow that to finish. While that's finishing, I'm just gonna go get the um, command to start that service. Okay, so that's finished. So let's paste in the command to start the service. And as soon as this is completed, we should start to see the data coming into the scene from the Windows host. Much like the Linux host, this is so easy to set up the agents and get them talking back. So let's go have a look in our server. We'll give it a moment and hopefully we'll see the additional agent connected. Okay, we do have a new agent appearing and it's showing as disconnected. So it has at least checked in. Let's see if that shows as connected. There we go. So we now have a Windows box on here as well. So let's go in and see what data is coming back for our Windows host. So if we click into the Windows host here, we can see um, lots of information already flooding in. We've got some MITRE attack framework um, alerts that are fired already. Uh, we've got a bunch of vulnerability detections. This is an older version of Windows 10 Pro, so I'm not surprised about that. Um, we also have CIS benchmarking um, stuff come through as well. So if we click into that, you can see all of the recommendations for CIS benchmark, and that has got a bunch that have failed. So you can go through that and harden the machine to make sure it meets compliance for CIS benchmarking. Um, we can see all the individual events for that. 
If we go back to the Windows host page, we also have um, file integrity monitoring. One of the good things about um, the Windows agent is it does also monitor the registry. So you'll be able to see changes to the registry. By default, this scans every 12 hours, I believe, but you can ratchet that up. You can make it scan as much as you want. Um, and you can also put in custom rules for the scanning of the, the FIM there. If we go back to the Windows host agent page, we have um, the vulnerability detection page where we can see all of the vulnerabilities that have been found. It looks like this needs an update. I mean, given that Windows 10 is gonna be discontinued in October anyway, <laughs> probably should be running Windows 11 instead. Let's go back. Okay, so let's try and generate a little bit of noise here. I'm gonna jump back over to the Windows host. I'm gonna install some apps and maybe run some malicious software to see what comes back. Okay, so let's download some apps to generate some noise so we can go and see that in the scene. Okay, I think on this machine, I've already put WinGet on there, perfect. So let's uh, go over to WinInstall. It's just an app that lets you create a quick list of um, programs that you can install. Let's see some common ones. Let's get Notepad++, if it will load. Select, let's just grab some of these common apps here so we can generate some noise on this host. Get Chrome, Notion, and let's grab Discord. Okay, so let's generate a script here. Uh, we want PowerShell, let's copy this and let's run this to start installing a bunch of apps to generate some noise. You'll see that WinGet just goes ahead and it starts installing stuff to the host. And once that's done, we'll jump back into the seam and see what it's picked up. Now that we've installed some apps like Google Chrome, let's go back into the seam and see if we can see that activity. So we're gonna click back into our Windows agent. Uh, let's go, oh, we've got some file integrity monitoring alerts that have come in for registry keys that have changed. Let's go into threat hunting and events. And in here we can see those registry key changes again. Uh, here we go, we can also see Google Chrome was installed. We can expand that here. Um, so yeah, we've got the agent running on the Windows host and as you're doing things on that host, you can see it being pushed through to the scene. So I just wanna show you this part of the documentation. Under user manuals capabilities, we can see all of the different capabilities that you can enable and configure for Wazar. We have um, command monitoring, container security, system inventory. Some of these you would have seen already enabled, but you can go into the documentation, find out ways that you can configure it and hone it in more. For example, the file integrity monitoring was monitoring uh, the Windows registry and some certain file paths, but you can add to those file paths. You can really make it more specific. And on Windows, you can make it re real time. You can also change how um, often the scanning happens. There's malware detection, which you can integrate with Virus Total, which is really cool, with an API key. When it detects something on the system, it will then check with Virus Total and it will flag that up for you. You can match that with Active Response and you can actually make it start deleting those files as soon as it gets those hits. There's so much you can do with this. I really encourage you to play around with the interface, explore the different modules and some of the more advanced capabilities, play around with adding more agents of different OS types, see what data Wazar is collecting and what data Wazar can collect. Also play around with creating your own custom dashboards, setting up custom alerts, and maybe you can run some dodgy software in some of your boxes that have agents on them and see how that looks back in the scene. If you'd like me to cover some more topics in depth, such as the exciting active response capabilities, or maybe start a mini series on Wazar, let me know in the comments below. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like, and don't forget to subscribe for more cybersecurity content. What other cybersecurity tools or topics would you like me to cover? Let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.